Namaste, this is Monica and I welcome you to this yin yoga practice which is focused on your spine, on your back. Uh, we are going to establish this connection with the back. Of course, in yin yoga, you will also be working in your hips, in your lower body mostly. But mentally, we are going to focus on our back and how our back feels in each asana and what is really releasing the tension and the stiffness from the back. This awareness will also help you then making those small little stretches for yourself during the day when you're feeling stiff in your body. In yin yoga, we hold our asanas for longer, so I would suggest keep some props around you, keep some pillows, bolster. If you don't have, that's perfectly fine. But these having these props around you gives you more freedom to make our, an asana more accessible and comfortable for you while you're holding, right? We always follow three principles in yin yoga. We find an edge in an asana, which means we find the point which is comfortable enough for us to hold for about three to five minutes. So, a lot of awareness of your body will be required to find your edge and a lot of acceptance. Number two, we remain still. So after we find the edge, we don't really make unnecessary movement, only conscious movement, if at all, if we have to make. Number three is we hold our asana for the time that we have decided. So yin yoga is of course has multiple physical benefits, but you will definitely immediately feel the mental benefits of this practice after you finish your practice during the practice it has capacity to really relax your mind take you into meditative state so i cannot really stop bragging about this practice so that without any delay let's meet on the mat and let's explore this practice together so lie down on your back first keeping your knees bent your feet just grounded on the floor, knees pointing up, arms on the side. Sweep your awareness throughout the body to relax your body. Eyes closed, lips gently closed. Find your body sinking down on the ground, centering and grounding yourself, feeling your lower back touching the ground. Become aware of your spine laid on the mat. Maybe feel your vertebrae by pressing your spine down on the floor, pressing your sacrum first, then your lumbar region, just above your sacrum, your lower back, mid back, Pressing your upper back down on the floor and flow your spine to your neck and to the crown of your head. Feeling your back fully resting on the mat. Your shoulders resting on the mat. Feeling your feet touching the ground. And also taking your awareness to your breath and just watching the natural rhythm of your breath. Relaxing into your being here, withdrawing all your attention to this moment, feeling the space around you. Feeling the air touching your body. Feeling your body getting relaxed with each exhalation. Let us set an intention to continue this session with this mindfulness. We are going to move our toes, fingers gently, become aware of the body. Maybe move your head from one side to the other. Roll over to your right. Make a pillow with your right hand. Press your left palm down to lift yourself back up. 
and we are going to chant one om ti shantis to begin a session first you can join your palms to the heart center take a deep breath in Shantihi, Shantihi, Shantihi. As you exhale, you can open your eyes. <clears throat> now we are going to move into butterfly so you can place your feet together the sole of your feet touching each other keeping a nice diamond shape between your legs so which means your heels will be little away from you and not very close which usually we do in the butterfly so just see if you can make this diamond shape now you have multiple options here you can do this with props you can do it without props if you want to support your ankles you can place a cushion under your ankles alternatively you may also want to support the top of your ankles with a cushion so that you can fold over you may want to support your knees with the cushions on both of the sides you can also explore that if you have bolster around you you can also use bolster maybe placing it in between your groin and your feet resting your forearms over the bolster and dropping your head down Another option is for you to taking the longer side of the bolster and press your chin over the bolster, resting your chin or your forehead over the bolster and maybe hug the bolster with that. So it depends on how deep that you want to go in your pose. You would decide how you want to use your prop. And that depends how deep that you want to go in your pose depends on the edge that you're going to find for yourself. So finding your edge means that not making yourself too uncomfortable in whatever edge that you're finding for yourself. So find that point which is comfortable enough for you to hold here for about four minutes. And the focus point in this particular asana is going to be our back here. So we are going to try and extend our back as much as we can. So maybe walk your palms over your thighs or placing it over your shin. See how far that you can go. If you're somewhere here in the center, that's also fine. Allow your drop to head down. Allow your head to drop down towards the floor, relaxing your neck, extending the back side of your neck here. Relax the shoulders and feel how your spine is feeling in this asana. Important that you find your edge, which will come with the awareness of your body. You may also feel some sensations in your hips, the upper thighs, inner hamstrings. But we are trying to focus on the spine more importantly here. Of course, even though the body is working on other parts of the body. Today we are going to focus mostly on the spine, the lower back, upper back. So remember always in each asana that we get into, we are going to find the edge, we are going to find that point which is okay for us to hold for about three to four minutes. And after that we are trying to remain still, not move unnecessarily. Unless you find the new edge, feel free to go down deeper when you find the new edge. And we are going to hold for the time that we have decided for ourselves. So of course, so your body and how you're feeling in your body today is important that you are aware of it when it comes to finding the edge. And also important that you are aware of your mind, how your mind feels today. So becoming aware fully of the breath, our mind, body, everything as we hold here.
In between, if you feel uncomfortable in your neck, feel free to lift it up. Stay, keep it lifted for some time and then maybe again dropping it back. It is preferred that we drop the head because we don't want to really have any control on our body once we find our edge in any asana. We would want it to go and let go of all the control. We would want to surrender. Experiencing what happens when you surrender in your practice. Experiencing how you allow, how you can allow gravity to work on your body and how beautifully it opens inch by inch. And that's why we are not engaging the muscles once you found the edge. We are letting everything go. Finding the beauty of this practice into surrenderance. Relax the shoulders, relax your whole body, relax your jaw. Watching yourself sinking deeper into your asana with every exhalation that you take. And now from here slowly, you can press your palms down and start to walk your palms back. Coming back to the center, keep your feet apart from each other, about two feet distance, wider than your hip distance apart. We are going to counter the pose that we have just done. So you can place your palms behind you and drop both of your knees to the side if you can, or as much as you can drop then onto the other side. So let us repeat it about two, three times. It's called windshield wipers. Just relaxing your back here again. And again, coming back to the center, we are also going to explore one more forward fold here for our lower back and the mid back. So over here, we are going to keep some distance instead of keeping the feet together, little bit away from each other. And again, if you want, sitting over the cushion at the edge of the cushion, that will give you some nice lifting and the tilt in your hips. So you can explore that if you feel better with the cushion underneath your hips. And then again, you can either place your palms on your shin, inside your legs or outside and drop your head down. You may feel a little stretch in your hamstrings here. But we are trying to take our chest a little bit for more forward, allowing our spine to round because we are working on the extension of the spine here, on the lengthening of the spine. But at the same time, we are allowing the chest also to collapse. And that's okay. Again, if you want to use a bolster, you can use it. You can keep it on your lap, over your thighs, rest your elbows over the bolster, and then drop the head down. You can use the longer side in between, and then just resting your chest over the bolster. So choose your variation, whichever feels best for you right now in this moment. And again, we are going to hold here for about three to four minutes. If you want, you can also use one more cushion. You can use the pile of pillows, cushion, whatever, to make you feel more comfortable in this practice. And you can allow your feet to fall a little bit onto the side. We are not actively holding on to our feet or anything for that matter. If you feel you need a cushion, roll towel under your knees, you can do that as well. If it, is, it feels uncomfortable for you. I really like to rest my forehead sometimes over my interlaced fingers. You can explore, and that's the beauty of this practice. You can explore this practice in the best way possible that feels for you. And 
for each one it will be different the the props the use of props will be different maybe you don't want to use maybe you want to use so just exploring your own body and what feels right to you in this moment and just looking for the sensation look for the sensation in your back look for the sensation maybe in your hips in your hamstrings and the moment you feel that you don't get enough sensation that's when you know you found a new edge so feel free to go deeper maybe removing the props in between your practice that's also fine if your body asks for it if you feel that i'm not getting any sensation anymore that's when you go deeper So this practice is not about pushing, this practice is about surrendering, perseverance, perseverance into the edge that you have found yourself. Pause and be still and relax and let go allowing all the emotions to come up or anything that is coming up to the surface allow that to happen sometimes you may touch the bliss sometimes difficult emotions sometimes stillness it will be different on different days so just Focusing what you are touching today about yourself. And let go. Keep sweeping awareness to see if you're holding any tension anywhere. Or if you're trying to control any body part. If you are, let go. And from here again, press your palms down to walk your palms back. We are going to move into puppy pose from here. So that can be a bit challenging for hold, to hold about two, three minutes. So in between, if you feel that you can't take it anymore, that's okay. Then you can just move into the child pose and hold in puppy pose for as long as that your body allows. Now for puppy pose, you can come on your foes and allow, make sure that you're supporting your knees with a cushion or a folded blank, blanket my mat is pretty thick so I should be fine but if you don't have anything around then a towel or bed sheet anything will do or if you have cushions you can just place some two cushions under your knees walk your palms forward align your hips with your knees and then press your forearms down you can stay here itself maybe giving a slight sleep steep to your spine here or some of you may be able to go a little bit more forward stretching your arms out and sinking the chest down all the way now if you want you can always support your chest with the cushion under your chest so choose your variation different variations that you can use or maybe place a bolster under your chest you can rest your chin or forehead on the bolster or cushion whatever you have around you so choose your variation here Again, focusing on your spine here. Now, just yourself at any point, you feel this is uncomfortable. I want it to be more comfortable for, for myself. Adjust yourself. If 
finding the new edge means you may want to if you have cushion under your chest you may want to remove it because your body wants to go further down if you're on your forearms you can then walk your palms forward stretch your arms out different edges that you can find in this practice You may feel some sensation in your shoulders. And if you find a new edge, you can release like I found a new edge. So I'm releasing the boost, the cushion underneath my chest. I don't need that anymore. And now I can simply relax my chest almost on the floor. So we are surrendering the torso fully. The activity is happening in your feet, knees and your palms. From here again, press your palms down, interlace your fingers, bring your big toes together and we are going to separate our knees, keeping a distance between the knees a little bit. And from here again, we are going to stay here for a minute in this position itself and allowing the torso to come down and let the gravity work on your torso. So my knees are almost touching the longer edge of the mat. You can keep it wider if that feels more comfortable for you and so just deciding the distance between the knees based on whatever edge that you found yourself and allowing the chest to sink down elbows pressing down surrender surrender your torso fully feeling the sensation maybe in your upper back mid back can be a little challenging on your arms as you surrender your weight. Relax your neck completely. And from here, open your fingers, placing your forearms on the mat and moving into your sphinx pose. Take your knees back, pelvis resting on the floor. Inhale to lift your chest and then maybe drop your head down if you have to. Alternatively, you can also place a cushion under your pelvis. So sometimes pelvis starts to hurt in this asana for very, very long. So I usually like to support my pelvis with the cushion because we are holding it for about three to four minutes alternate alternatively you may also want to use the bolster under your chest so you can just keep the bolster in the horizontal position and place your bolster right under your chest here so that your chest can be nice and lifted and keeping your forearms beyond the bolster or you can interlace your fingers staying here so choose your variation i am going to do this without the bolster but you can continue to use the bolster if you want feeling the sensation in your lower back you can drop the head down and whenever it feels uncomfortable you can again lift your head up 
then again drop it down so just making sure that we are not making any unconscious movement whatever movement that we are making we are doing that very very consciously and no fidgeting no really fiddling with fingers or hair because we are calling for stillness through this practice and learning to be still not feeling the need to be doing something or the other all the time learning to take our actions and then surrender so that's what happens in yin yoga you find your edge and before finding the edge it's all action you move and you see what is working for you and then suddenly you find the edge and once you find the edge you let go you wait for the body to work on itself you trust in the in your practice and you have faith in your practice that whatever is happening is working for you without you doing anything about it so taking your action and then trusting in the process and let go and of course in the process you will find discomfort and that's when you just watch it you still continue to have faith in your practice that it is working for you and watching through little discomfort that you might be getting say in this pra- in this asana in your arms maybe in your back feeling the sensation all we can do is watch through that feeling absorbing it making part of the experience the whole experience your legs can be free you don't have to have control let them fall down onto the sides surrender surrender the weight of the torso Now for next 1 minute you can interlace your fingers bend both of your knees and allow your feet to drop towards your hips so you just surrender your shin and then let them drop towards your hips you don't control them anywhere it will give further a little bit more stress and compression to your lower back releasing the stiffness furthermore and if you feel holding your chest up is more challenging now and you want to just rest your forehead on your arms let that happen or you can rest your forehead on your crossed arms or just your palms just little bit still lifted from the floor and again dropping your shin back down on the floor press your palms down walk your palms up you can lift up or just roll on your back from there itself wherever you are so rolling and now we will be moving to the asana i'm just changing my side because i feel more comfortable when i lie lie down on this side i'm just used to it you can keep your knees bent we will move to a variation of the bridge pose or if you want you can do this without the prop as well keeping your feet hip distance apart knees bent hands on the side you can lift your hips up slowly and just surrender your body weight almost to your shoulders you can stay here or some of you may want to use the bolster or the 
pillows whatever you have as a prop maybe two three pillows two three cushions and resting your hips over the cushion feeling the enough opening in the chest little bit of stretch in your groin area or if you have the bolster you can also slide the bolster you can also use block the shorter edge of the block i don't personally find block very comfortable and that's why i don't really use and teach the yin yoga with blocks but you can definitely try and hold it with the block if you want so again for every prop that you use you would always slide it in after lifting your hips up never really just trying to push it in always lift your hips up and slide the prop in so you can use this give as much height you can use the pile of pillows cushions whatever you can stay here or you can also straighten your legs out and feeling a little bit of stretch in your groin when you straighten your legs out you feel more in your groin stretch as well as the back here the sensation in your lower back so choose the variation allowing your body weight to surrender on your shoulders you can also stretch your arms out or onto the side whatever feels more comfortable for you remembering this is your practice it is individual it is for us so we have to just listen to our body and find our own variation and that's the beauty of this practice that we can customize it in the way that we want as long as we are getting the desired sensation so that we know that there's this body part that we are focusing on is working we are focusing on the back here there is some sensation happening in the lower back and that is what we are working on and more you let go more you surrender more you'll feel the sensation more you hold up lesser the sensation that you feel and that's the resistance actually because the body doesn't want to feel the full sensation it resists and because it resists we hold up we don't surrender fully so let go of your resistance and as you exhale you can now start to bring your knees if even if you're lying down on the bolster it's fine bring your knees closer to your chest and you allow to hug your shin like you can use your arms hug your shin and hold here for a minute shifting your body weight over your shoulders surrender I'm interlacing my fingers but you can just individually hold on to your individual shin that's okay or knees if that feels better relax the shoulders place your foot down again lift your hips and slide your bolster out now we are going to move to sleeping pigeon pose another great asana for your lower back keeping your knees bent bring your right ankle over your left knee you can simply stay here if you're getting sensation and pressing your lower back down 
Alternatively, you can lift your foot off the floor, the left foot, hug your under thigh, left under thigh, or hug your shin, interlace your fingers, pressing it towards your chest a little bit, and surrender. If you feel that your arms are straightening and you, it's very difficult for you to hold, then you can just simply maybe use the belt, wrap the belt around your shin, and placing your forearms, upper arms on the floor. We don't want our arms also to be very active. We want our asana to be relaxing at the same time. So just hold here if you want to support your feet with two cushions, bolster, resting your foot over the cushion bolster, you can do that as well. So choose your variation. This is really good for your lower back again. Of course, it works on your hips as well. Cords and hips. And feel your lower back touching the ground. Feel yourself pressing it down. And how it is feeling relaxed. Exhale to slowly release. Let us change the side. Left ankle over your right thigh, just below your knee. Hug your under thigh or your shin. Relax your arms, pressing the lower back down. And holding here. Keep focusing on your breath and the sensations. Feeling your entire back on the ground. Noticing the sensation in your left hip. Noticing how you're holding your thigh the position of your neck. See if you can feel any part of your spine on the floor. Focusing on whatever vertebrae that you can focus on, whatever that you can feel. And exhale to again release. We are going to move into the side release of our spine now through banana asana. So you can extend your legs out, extend your arms out, catching hold of your right wrist with your left palm, taking both of your feet to the side and then also shifting your torso to the right, making a banana shape with your body. You can rest your head on the right side or you can rest your head on the opposite arm or opposite upper arm. You may also place, want to place the left ankle over the right ankle and explore that, whatever feels okay for you. So we are not contracting this side, just enough 
tilt so that we can release the left side of the body here. We're going to hold here for about two minutes. and let go. Again, just surrendering. Feeling this nice, subtle, gentle release from the side. Feel your shoulders resting on the floor. Your hips, your feet. Noticing, are you able to let go? Are you still holding any tension? If there's any resistance still in your body, and now coming back to the center, let us change the side, shifting your legs to your left and also torso to the left side. You can this time catch hold of your left wrist with your right palm or you can keep the same hold, that's okay. Again, let go. back to the center and let us move into Shavasana again if you want place a cushion or the bolster under your knees I'm going to do that today because I would definitely want my lower back to be touching the ground if you want you can also do that you can always fold a towel or napkin or napkin wouldn't really help that much but maybe a blanket or bed sheet you can place that under your knees this is just to relax the lower back as well on the ground. Otherwise, there's always some gap. And just let go. 
relax your whole body Relax your feet, relax your ankles, relax your shin, your calf, relax your knees, your thighs. Relax the area around your hips, your groin. Let go of all the tension from your lower back, your spine. Noticing your whole back to be relaxing on the ground. We have worked mostly on our back and our spine today. So really noticing how it feels right now. Your abdomen, rib cage, your chest. Relax your shoulders, your hands, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your neck, relax your face. All of your facial muscles, your cheeks, your lips, your chin, nose, your eyes, your forehead. Relaxing it all, relaxing the crown of your head. Stay here in this relaxation, in this whole body relaxation for some time. Touching the silence within us. Noticing how we are able to notice everything that is happening in our mind and outside our mind. And maybe connecting with that noticer itself, the one which notices. You can continue in this relaxation for as long as you wish. If you want to come out, you can start to move your ankles, your wrist, maybe making a circular motion, rotating clockwise and anti-clockwise gently, moving your fingers, your toes. You can move your head from one side to the other. Lift your pelvis a little bit up, bring your arms together, stretch your legs out, stretch your arms up. You can bend both of your knees, roll over to your right. Press your left palm down on the mat, lift yourself back up to come into your sitting asana. So we're going to seal our practice with one arm. Take a moment to absorb your practice.
Let us have full faith in our practice and let us seal that practice. Join your palms to the heart center. Take a deep breath in. Oh. As you exhale, you can open your eyes. Thank you very much for joining me in. I hope you're feeling relaxed in your spine and your back and you could really connect with your back today. Um, so focus practices really help us doing that thing. Like we, we actually connect with that body part on a deeper level, understand that on a deeper level. And I hope you have been able to establish that connection with your back today in this practice. So I hope uh, to see you soon again in some other practice. Until then, have a lovely day ahead. Bye-bye.